Hey, it's Mr. N here, and I'm here to help you in case you have a little trouble using your calculator to find those things. Hopefully, you've already seen that this paper is in your um, folder. So you can always look at this. These are notes I've typed up. But in case you want to see some actual examples of how they work, I'm using my calculator that I had back in college. Their TI 90s are still, or TI calculators are still pretty similar. They look nicer, but they mostly still do the same thing. If you're using another brand, it may vary a little bit. Um, um, but this is just how you do it. Online sometimes works, but sometimes it does give funky answers. So just um, be aware. So the, before you use your calculator, the first thing you want to do is make, and this is a warm up I used to give in these, so we'll do a couple of these as a sample. The first thing you have to do is make sure you're in the correct mode, because as we know, there are degrees and there are radians. Um, most calculators do do degrees by default. The Schoology calculator defaults into radians, so you have to change it if you want to go in degrees. Now your calculator may vary for me. I hit the button that says mode, right? So I hit that button and I'll see a menu like this. And as you can see, degrees is already highlighted. So that means it's actually ready to go. Now if I wanted to change to radian, I would just move with the arrows down to there. And then I would just click the enter button and now if I move, confirm, the radian is highlighted. All right, now I do want to be in degrees, so I'm going to go back up and hit enter. And I'm going to move off to make sure it logged in. Yep, and so that's degrees. And I usually just hit clear. Clear usually gets out of anything to get off of that screen. So now I know I'm ready to go in degrees. Make sure you can share. Many this one does not, but many calculators have a little tiny little D or R in the corner, meaning you're in degree mode for D or R for radians. Calculators vary, but some calculators do have that feature. Um, that mine does not, but many do. All right. So if you just want to find just cosine of 25 degrees for the calculator, you just hit the cosine button and you hit 25. Um, mine does a parenthesis, it's just automatic, and I just hit enter, and that's it. There's the decimal version. Now, most of the decimals, this does not actually stop at seven. It keeps going on forever, but it doesn't show all the decimals. Traditionally, in pre-calculus, we just do the first four decimals, rounding if we need to. So the answer for this, I would say, is 0 0.9063, and then I would just stop there. Okay, so that would be my answer for the cosine of 25 degrees, all right? Same thing for sine and uh, cosine and tangent. You just hit the button, hit your degree, you're done. Now, what about cosecant? All right, well, cosecant, notice there's no cosecant button. So that's a little bit harder to do. So here's what you do. You hit it, find it, remember what the partner function of cosecant is. Cosecant's partner is sine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the sine button, uh, and you can do decimals, 52.3 degrees, 52.3 degrees, and I hit enter. Now, that's the sign I want the cosecant, but the cosecant is just the sign flipped over. So if I could just flip that number over, I would have my answer, and I do have a button. This one right here, that's above my thumb, it has an x to the power of negative one. That means raise it to negative one, that means flip it over because x to the negative one is the same thing as one over x, which means it got flipped over. Now on some calculators, the button actually says one over x. So mine says x to the negative one. So I'm going to, now I have to take that answer. To get the answer, uh, A and S, I hit second, and then I hit this button here above my thumb, and that means take the answer I just got. So that means A and S stands for the answer you just got. So 0.79, blah, blah, and take it to the power of negative one, meaning flip it over. Hit enter, and that is my answer for number two. That would be the cosecant. Again, I would now, once you get past the decimal, I go four. So my final answer will be 1.263. And then after the eight is a six, I'd run it to nine. So 1.2639 would be my rounded off answer for number two. Okay? And so you could do, so, when you're doing the secant or cosecant or cotangent or um, any of the co-functions, just find the regular one, take the answer, and then flip it over. Uh, usually most calculators have a button called an answer button. Some they have called last answer button. Uh, on my calculator, I have to hit the second function and then this. This button, normally the gray button, uh, usually means you're doing a negative number. 
right? But when the yellow part, ANS, you can see it's above it. To get that, it's a second function button. So ANS means take the answer I just got and do something else with it. Okay, I'm going to clear so I can get the screen read it. And let's go to the inverse. Now, you would think I'm just going to hit sine and negative one, but that's actually, calculators work a little bit differently. That's not how we actually do it. If you see above the sine button, it's a little blurry, but there's a yellowish that says sine negative one. So I'm going to have to hit the second function and look, the negative one is there for me. All right? If I hit sine and this negative one separately, it's going to just think I'm flipping over sine. It doesn't think I'm doing the inverse sine. And then I just hit these decimals, zero point, and the zero is optional, but point three, five, seven, eight. I hit enter, and that decimal is my inverse sign. Um, so yeah, that would be the answer for that. Now that's a degree, this represents a degree. Now usually degrees, we just round to one decimal place. So we say the answer is 20.9 degrees, actually it's 0.96, so we actually just round this to just 21 degrees, because 20.9 is pretty much at 3.96, we'll just call it 21 degrees when we round it, okay? So make sure you do rounding. So this is a degree answer. That's 20 degrees, 21 degrees. The, uh, the degree sine of 20 degrees would get you about 3.3578. I say about because we're rounding, so it's not going to be exact, but it will be pretty dang close. So that's how you do inverse sine. If you want to do inverse cosine, for my calculator, I hit second and cosine, all right? I'm going to clear it, and inverse tan the same way. Now, notice there's no inverse cotangent button or no, um, you know, arc secant of four. Right? We don't have an arc secant button. So this is one, I guess, this is the most complicated one. This one's actually a little bit tricky. So what you have to do for arc secant is first, I'm going to hit the number first, all right? And this is all mentioned here. So now I'm doing, so I found basic trick functions, secant cosecant, you know, I hit it and then hit inverse. Right. To find inverse, I just hit it, round to there's decimal. This is the, we're doing the bottom one. This is kind of the trickiest one. It's kind of a few steps. So if I'm doing the arc secant of four, right, first I hit four, and then I hit the inverse button. I have to flip it over. Now, actually, I already know that's going to be 0.25, but sometimes it's a number you don't know what it's going to be when you flip it over. Okay. So that's how I start. I have to flip it over first. Then I'm going to hit the partner function of secant. The partner function of secant is cosine. So I'm going to inverse cosine, right? Because I've already flipped it over. And then I'm going to take the answer I just got. It's 0.25. Now you could just hit answer. Answer means use the number you just got. So I'm doing the inverse cosine of 0.25, the number I just got. And then I hit enter. And that is my final answer. It's going to be, now this is a degree. So 75.5 degrees, that would be my answer. All right, when you find an arc or an inverse, your answer is gonna be in degrees. So that's 75.5 degrees, all right? I hope that's been helpful. Make sure this button down here, use that for negatives, use this. Um, it, usually calculators don't work so well on that. Okay, so refer to this page that's in the folder, all right? It's a PDF document. All right, this has all the directions I just did. That's just a little sample video in case you need to see it. Okay, hope that helps.